Today, we will be giving a gameplay overview and review of the game Cavern Tavern, created by Vojkan Krzyzewski and published by Final Frontier Games. The game plays in 60 to 120 minutes, is suggested for ages 13 and up, and accommodates two to five players. Hello everyone, and welcome to another episode with To Die For Games. I'm Mandy, aka the Board Gaming Pinup Girl. Joining us today are Tracy, the Gaming Maven, and Stefan, the Games Teacher. Today we'll be giving a gameplay overview and review of the Kickstarter Cavern Tavern, which launches Wednesday, April 20th, 2016, so mark your calendars. We've got Cavern Tavern all set up and ready to go, so let's get to it. Objective. Cavern Tavern is a worker dice placement and resource management game that is set in a fantasy world. Each player assumes the role of a worker in the tavern. Your job is to serve drinks, work in the kitchen, complete chores, and try to keep every guest happy, including Nasty, the dwarf, the bar owner. The game takes place over 10 rounds, and the person with the most points at the end of the night wins the game. Components. Main game board, five player boards, 100 ingredient cards, including eight ambrosia cards, eight beer cards, eight elixir cards, eight fruit cards, eight herbs cards, eight liqueur cards, eight meat cards, eight nectar cards, eight rocks cards, eight spirits cards, eight syrup cards, eight wine cards, four magic potion cards, 42 order cards, 20 items cards, 50 Nasty the Dwarf Says cards, 8 Nasty Secret Task cards, 5 reference cards, 10 wooden pieces, 5 meeples, one for each player color, 5 score markers, one for each player color, 21 dice, 50 time tokens, 10 for each player, 15 reputation tokens, 3 for each player color, 1 star player token, 1 round marker, and the rules book. Setup. Place the main board within easy reach of all players. The main board consists of the main tavern area, the cellar, the kitchen area, the chores area, the wizard's workshop, and Nasty's office. Each player takes their player board, as well as their meeple, scoring marker, four dice, three reputation tokens, and ten time tokens of their color. Place your reputation tokens at the top of each track on the left side of your player board. One for the nasty track, one for the kitchen track, and one for the chores track. Place your 10 time tokens, meeple, and dice on the appropriate spots on your player board. Then place your score marker on the zero spot of the score track on the main game board. Separate the 12 main ingredient types and place them within easy reach of all players. Place the magic potion cards next to the wizard's workshop and place the items cards nearby. Place the white die beside the player board. We'll revisit this in a moment. Place the nasty the dwarf says cards on their spot at the top of the board. Shuffle the order cards and place the deck beside the board. Finally, shuffle the nasty secret task cards and deal one face down to each player, returning the rest to the box. Each player can look at their own nasty secret task card, but they are kept secret from other players until the end of the game. Action areas on the main and player boards. Before we begin playing, let's look at some of the unique action areas of the game boards in Cavern Tavern. Player boards. The reputation track on the player boards have a few special spots. There are three columns, the nasty track, kitchen, and chore tracks. When players perform kitchen or chore actions, they move down the corresponding track on their player boards. When players reach the third, sixth, 
and night spots along these two tracks, they earn bonuses. At the third level, players earn two additional points when performing a kitchen or chore task respectively. At the sixth level, they receive three additional points and the ability to change a single die, the value of one up or down when using it to perform a kitchen or chore task respectively. At the ninth level, they receive four additional points and the ability to change a single die, the value of two up or down when using it performing a kitchen task or chore task. The nasty track is different as players will lose points at the end of the game, the further down the track they go. Moving up and down on the nasty track can happen in two ways. One, for every round a player is late with completing an order, they must go down one on their nasty track. Two, a player can visit Nasty the Dwarf in his office voluntarily and go up their track while badmouthing another player. This forces them to go down on their own track. The maximum value a player can reach on Nasty Track is nine. Main board. The kitchen and chore actions give a player multiple bonuses. These action spaces give victory points, an ingredient, and other special actions. The chore actions have a C, which allows a player to move down their chore track. Kitchen actions, which have a K, allows a player to move down their kitchen track. How to play. The first player is the last person to have been in a tavern brawl, or by whatever means you find best. That player takes the start player token, and the last player, in clockwise order, will take the extra white die into their dice pool. Before starting the first round, all players will roll their dice simultaneously. Players will take four ingredients, five if they are the last player. The die faces determine which ingredients they will take to start the game with. The cellar spaces each show two ingredients matching each die face. So players get to choose one of the two ingredients, matching each die face showing. Once everyone has chosen their ingredients, Place six orders face up in the main area of the tavern. Players will re-roll their dice and place them on their player board. Now round one can begin. Actions in a turn. Each player takes a turn beginning with the start player and playing clockwise. During your turn, you can take any number of the following actions. One, take an order from the main area of the tavern. Two, play an item card. 3. Place dice and take the action. 4. Complete an order. 1. Take an order from the main area of the tavern. Each player must take an order on the first round if they don't have one from the previous round. Therefore, all players will take an order on their first turn of the game. When a player takes an order, they place their meeple next to the table that they took the order from and the time token matching the time the round counter is on. No new order can be placed here until you complete the previous table patron's order. Once you complete an order, take back your meeple and the time token and refill the empty table with a new order from the deck. If you don't like the orders available at the tavern, you may instead draw the top card from the orders deck. Then discard an order of your choice from the tavern, placing your meeple and time token at that table. Two, play an item card. The item cards can help you during your shift and you may play as many item cards as desired during your turn. Three, place dice and take the action. In turn order, players now have the opportunity to take one action in the tavern on the marked spaces by placing dice. One action means placing a die or dice on a single action space. Players will continue taking actions until all players run out of dice. To take an action in the tavern, players must spend one or more of their dice per turn. The total value of dice placed in spot must be exactly equal to the action value marked on that spot. Action spaces numbered one to six allow players to collect ingredients available in the cellar room. 
matching the value of the dice placed. Players must choose to receive only one of the two ingredients available at each space. Provided there are spaces remaining in the cellar rooms, a single player can take the same cellar action more than once, taking a new ingredient each time. Action spaces 7 to 18 are kitchen tasks and chores. There is only a single space for each of these actions, so only one player can take each action per round. The exception to this rule is if a player uses a special item card. The magic potion action allows a player to use any three dice to receive both one magic potion and one item. The item action allows players to use any two dice, which allows the player to draw three item cards, choose one, return the others to the deck, and then shuffle the deck. The talk to nasty action requires the use of a single die. When you talk to Nasty, two things happen. First, the player who placed the die improves their reputation with Nasty by moving their marker on their Nasty track up one space. That player then badmouths another player to Nasty, choosing someone else who will then move their token down one space on their own Nasty track. Note, there are multiple spots when collecting ingredients in the cellar. When using the Wizard's Workshop, or when talking with Nasty the Dwarf. Certain spots are only used when a certain number of players are playing the game, indicated by a number on those spaces. If you have no dice left or cannot legally place any dice, you must pass. 4. Completing an order. Customers from all over the realm come to taste the local food and enjoy some good drinks. After taking an action, players can complete an order using ingredients they have collected. To complete an order, you must use all of the ingredients on the order card you have on your player board. Each drink in Cavern Tavern is different and requires different ingredients. Remember that customers will not wait for hours for their order, so you must complete the order in the allotted amount of time, or you risk losing points. At the top center of the order card, the number is the amount of points you will receive if you complete it in the same round you received it. For every round that you are late, you will collect the points along the side of the order. Taking too long to complete an order will eventually lose you points. Completed orders are turned over on the player's board until the end of the game. When you complete an order, you are not required to take another one until the start of the next round. End of a round. When all dice have been placed, the round ends. Move the round marker one space to the right. Important! At the end of the round, every player that has an open order moves down one space on their nasty track. At the end of the round, players take back their dice, with the white die going to the player who was lowest on the score track. The player with the start player marker begins the round. End of the game. The game ends after 10 rounds, indicated by the time track. Final scoring includes subtracting points based on your position on your nasty track. You receive one victory point for every ingredient you still have on your player board, but only if you don't have an open order. Any incomplete Nasty the Dwarf says cards are worth minus 10 points each. Receive points for the Nasty Secret Task card players were dealt at the beginning of the game. Only the player who has the card scores if they complete the secret task. The player with the most points wins the game. So there you have it, Cavern Tavern. So guys, what'd you think? I love the fantasy look of it because that's kind of the types of books I read. So it kind of just brought me back into the good old Dragonlands D&D &D reading days of my teenage years. Yep. So. 
I like Nasty the Dwarf actually as the owner of the tavern. It, you know, having an irascible dwarf uh, always is a, an appeal to me whenever I'm reading a book, a fantasy book, or anything like that. So yeah. Yeah, I liked this game actually. It was really good uh, right off the bat. As soon as we started playing, the troll look, Nasty the Dwarf. Oh, that's so fun. I love that kind of stuff. So right away, got my attention. <laughs> so let's talk about components. What did you guys think? It's a Kickstarter, so bear that in mind. We don't have the actual copy, but. Despite the fact that it was a Kickstarter prototype, it came in almost finished condition, I found. Yep. The cards were nice and glossy, the board was actually a full board. So just the fact that the Kickstarter was like that, I'm sure the final game is gonna be absolutely great, so. Totally agree with that, mm -hmm. and Stefan? Uh, I agree, the artwork was pretty much near final. Um, it looked really good. Um, one other thing, one thing that I had a slight problem with was the order cards. Uh, the order of the ingredients on the order cards was not consistent. Maybe there was a reason why they did that to, impl to imply that, you know, this ingredient was more prevalent in the order in the drink in question. Um, but it did lend for a bit of confusion because you were looking all over the card to try and find where things were. Um, I think maybe putting those ingredients in the same order on each card would make more sense. Yeah, I agree. I like order, so something like that would appeal to me. Now, some of the things that we're talking about, we have actually clarified with the creator, and he was excellent about getting back to us. So these are just points that we're bouncing off of each other uh, to see that hopefully they will improve in the Kickstarter or just, you know, decide to change altogether. So it's, again, Again, we've been in contact with them. We're just kind of going over it for ourselves now. So um, I would have to agree with the components when I first received the game. Oh, I thought it was completed. <laughs> so there are a few minor things that I'm sure they will adjust, but I thought it was excellent so far. So I'm very excited to see um, how it comes when it's completed. So now let's talk about art. What do we think of the art? The art is very, very thematic. It definitely looks like a tavern. The, the main board looks like a tavern. So you've got your tables laid out with the little st wooden stools for people to, for the uh, patrons to sit at. And of course you have your little office for nasty kind of in the back. And so the cellar's on the bottom of the board. So it's very, you can almost imagine it's an actual tavern. So yeah, exactly. it was very, very nicely done. I agree. Uh, the artwork was really good. Um, it has a bit of the, um, not the same style of art as Munchkin, but the same character of art in that it's kind of a humorous fantasy setting yeah. um, where they obviously had a bit of tongue in cheek. Um, and uh, one thing I did like about it, uh, this isn't really related to art, but I did like thematically that they did a lot of flavor text with yes. the Nasty the Dwarf Says cards. Um, and the flavor text was, 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 was pretty funny <laughs> and humorous. So that, that just added to the whole uh, atmosphere of the game, I thought. Yeah, definitely. I agree 100% with both of you. The name kills me, by the way, Nasty the Dwarf. He loves that. So funny. I can just <laughs> picture him like this. And that's in the know. game. He looks nasty. So. <laughs> Even if I had no idea what this game was about, just looking at the artwork, I had some idea that, you know, I was going to be in some type of tavern. I'm going to be, you know, doing orders. It definitely was great art in my opinion, but again, it's a type of art that I like, so. I almost felt my butt get pinched one time. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. That's, that's a whole other, whole other game. <laughs> <laughs> so moving on to game mechanics. Game mechanics, let's talk about it. It's a dice. The dice represent the workers, so it's very reminiscent of Kingsburg in a game in that you actually place the dice on a specific spot and that action gives you, um, and just like Kingsburg, you also need to have the exact number, so the exact number you put with the dice is the same in this. That's the action you take if you're putting those dice there. So you need to have the right number if you're wanting to try to take that specific action. Yeah. Uh, I, I agree. Uh, the parallels to Kingsburg as well. Um, it was, a, I found, maybe a slightly lighter game strategically, um, which is not a bad thing. You know, I, I enjoy those as well. Um, I think I would compare it to something more recent like uh, Dice City, for instance, yeah. uh, which has a similar mechanic with the dice placement as well. Yeah. So, and uh, game mechanic, it's obviously what they said as well. I, it's not a dice game, but it reminded me of Village a little bit. So where you're able, everyone's able to take the different actions at the same spots until the markers run out. It's kind of the same idea where you can place your dice, but once uh, the spaces are filled, that's it. You can't place there anymore. So that kind of uh, concept was very similar in, uh, I thought, in Village. So I don't know if you guys agree or not. <laughs> yeah, in Village, you have to really balance the timing you know, of when you do things. So your right. orders, especially, you'll lose points possibly if you take too long. In Village, it's the same thing. If you exactly. wait too long to kill your guy off, he goes in the grave, the unmarked grave, instead of the chronicle. So it's got a lot of that proper timing of your strategy of when you got to play things and, and such. 
Okay, so I think yeah. that was a good comparison, actually. No dice, but very, very similar. <laughs> <laughs> I'm proud of myself. Okay, so we did talk, touch on some comparable games. So uh, in speaking Village, Kingsburg, Dice City, those are ones which would be similar, similar type of concept to this game. So final thoughts. I think I would definitely back this Kickstarter because I like the art, I like the theme. I liked the balance of the different actions you could take, so you could strategize on doing, you know, being really nasty to your opponents, or if you want to play a slightly more friendly game, just kind of take the various actions instead of, you know, going to talk to nasty and, and be all like, did you hear what he said? I know, I like that backstabbery. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of fun. This is your fan. Um, I'm not going to back this Kickstarter simply because if she's going to, we live in the same household, I don't need a second copy. Um, I do really like the game though, so uh, I'm really looking forward to playing her copy once it arrives in our household. Um, so yeah, no, really enjoyed the game. Uh, right out of the gate, uh, when I saw the, um, the original artwork for it, um, I, I wanted to play it right away. Um, and uh, it, it had some appeal. It's, it's a good light strategy game, uh, worker placement uh, with great theme, uh, good artwork. Uh, really looking forward to this uh, being a final product. Yeah, I'm very excited as well. We did play a game with, uh, well, we played a couple of games with uh, some non gamers, I guess you could say, and some serious gamers, and the consensus was. Everybody liked it. A couple of things that I thought uh, the game could potentially be a little bit shorter. Um, I know we talked a little bit about that, that uh I don't know if you want to give your thought on that. Yeah, I mean, if you feel the game is too long the first playthrough, it's 10 rounds. Uh, there's nothing, uh, you would lose nothing by, you know, dropping a round or two off the end of the game and playing to eight or nine rounds. Yeah. Uh, you would, you know, save a bit of time, uh, but otherwise, the, you know, the gameplay wouldn't change significantly with fewer rounds. So that's that's something that you could tailor, or maybe they could even incorporate that into the rules somehow to have a, a short, a medium, a long game. Yeah, exactly. And some other feedback we got when we were playing with some other gamers is the balance of rewards in the kitchen and, and chores tasks. I myself found them pretty balanced, but I could definitely see the point. Some people said, well, you're getting, you're not getting as much as you should, or you're getting too much for this. So right. not sure if that's going to change. It's up to, you know, I guess obviously all the play testing that's going on to see what makes the most sense. But um, again, you can see there's different opinions based on playing the same game at the same time. So it's kind of cool. Yeah, so those are all the things we discussed. I also thought that um, it appealed to a range of you know, gamers. So we, like I said, we had some diverse gamers we were playing with and everybody seemed to really enjoy it. Uh, some other things, uh, one other thing that we had talked about, the wording on the cards for the orders and then I guess the way that it was placed on the board. I remember someone mentioning that they thought it should have been in order based on the card. It should have been the same order on the board. Does that make sense what I'm saying? Like where you can actually put your dice should have kind of corresponded with the listing. Right. Does that? Oh, yeah. I see. Because the numbers are like seven through 18 for the chores and kitchens, you had like seven, nine, 11, and so on. So the odd numbers in the kitchen and then chores were even numbers. So it was a little odd. It did take us a minute to figure that out. Right. And it could trip people up a little bit. Not a huge issue. Not These huge are just issue. things that people had pointed out to yes. us. I mean, not a big deal for me. We did a lot of talking that night. Yes, we did. So <laughs> I hope you all appreciate that. <laughs> I did find uh, for the dice placement, I actually thought, I think we kind of agreed with this. No, no, it should only be one die per space per player. I thought that made it harder, but um, after some feedback and going over the rules again, no, you can actually place multiple dice uh, for uh, an ingredient. So I don't know. I. I would have preferred it if you could only place it one, but then again, it might have made it a bit more difficult. It might have made it too difficult, especially if some of the orders have eight ingredients and some of them need like two beer. Right. You might be there for a while. Something like that. So you might be a while, and then you definitely wouldn't be getting the top score. You'd be getting some of the lower scores for later rounds. Yeah, so. exactly. So, well, I think we have covered it. So going down the line, I give it a two thumbs up, and I will definitely be backing this <laughs> game. Not biased at all. <laughs> and Tracy? I'll be backing it. I won't be backing it, but I'll still give it two thumbs up. <laughs> oh, he's getting it here. Don't listen to him. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, thank you so much for joining us uh, for our latest episode. Uh, looking at Cavern Tavern, don't forget. Kickstarter, April 20th. Mark your calendars. All the information will be down below in the comments section. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next episode. Bye.